The Grand Canyon is a famous site all around the world and in the U.S. It's been called the basement of history since it's a physical manifestation of the geologic strata that can be traced back to distinct times in Earth's history. Both researchers and sightseers have been captivated by this natural phenomenon for decades. The Grand Canyon was the subject of a recent study by a group of academics. This investigation uncovered a disturbing finding that could significantly change our understanding of the ancient building. What exactly was this discovery, and how will it play a role in the history of the Grand Canyon? Let's find it out. The Grand Canyon was referred to by former President Teddy Roosevelt as one of the great sites that every American should visit. In addition, on February 26, 1919, exactly 100 years ago, Congress gave further credence to Roosevelt's travel advice by establishing the Grand Canyon National Park in Arizona. But the history of the canyon that stretches for 277 miles runs much deeper than that. Around 12,000 years ago, when the early Americans were beginning to migrate throughout the continent, they had their first brush with it. By the 16th century, Spanish explorers had begun to make their way through the region. In May of 1869, one armed Civil War veteran, John Wesley Powell, who would later become the head of the United States Geological Survey, led a group of nine men on a rowing excursion down the Colorado River that had never been done before. His account of the journey, as well as a second one he wrote about it two years later, contributed to the establishment of the Grand Canyon's status as a national landmark and natural wonder. Today, around six million people visit the Grand Canyon annually, making it the second most visited national park in the U.S. behind only the Great Smoky Mountains, which are much easier to get to. The sheer spectacle of how the Colorado River carved through layer after layer of rock to disclose an ombre of reds, browns, pinks, purples, and more attracts a large number of tourists who come to the canyon to gaze in awe at its mind-boggling size and to take in the breathtaking view. Grand Canyon is currently receiving a significant amount of attention and funding from both public and corporate organizations in the form of exploratory research. This never-ending need to learn brings about wonderful benefits, such as the unveiling of previously unknown mysteries in our world. Furthermore, the recently discovered canyons continue to pique the interest of scientists and academics to no end. The majestic Grand Canyon in the U.S. is another natural wonder that everyone is familiar with. The Grand Canyon is an incredible natural wonder that must be seen to be believed. People have been baffled by its abundance of caverns, canyons, streams, and wildlife for many years. There is a lot that we don't know about the Grand Canyon, even though it is stunning. Some mysteries lies dormant in the rocks, none of which have been solved or even uncovered as of yet. As a consequence of this, there are a lot of mysteries surrounding the canyon, many of which have given rise to conspiracies. One of the most well-known national parks in the U.S. is home to several intriguing urban legends and unsolved mysteries. In 2016, Alan Krill, a geologist, was leading a group of students on a hike along the Bright Angel Trail in Grand Canyon National Park. When he came across it, a boulder that had fallen off the trail and was lying just off the side of the path. On the boulder were strange markings that looked like footprints. Krill, a Norwegian paleontologist who was on a visit to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, shared photographs of his discovery with Stephen Rowland, an old friend and colleague who is also a paleontologist at UNLV. The discovery made by Krill turned out to be ancient footprints that had been petrified. The discovery was presented for the first time at the annual meeting of the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology in 2018. Now, in a new research that was published last week in PLOS One, Roland estimates that the imprints could be as old as up to around 313 million years, making them the oldest vertebrate fossil tracks yet found in the park, according to a statement released by the National Park Service. In addition to that, as reported by Shana Montanari for the Arizona Republic, these footprints have the potential to be some of the earliest known evidence in the world of an animal that lays hard-shelled eggs. This type of animal is known as an amniote. In the announcement, Roland writes, These are by far the oldest vertebrate tracks in Grand Canyon, which is recognized for its rich fossil traces. In addition to this, he mentions that they are among the oldest tracks on Earth of shelled egg-laying creatures, such as reptiles, and that they represent the earliest evidence of vertebrate animals walking in sand dunes. According to information provided by Harmeet Kaur for CNN, 
The boulder that was found to contain tracks weighs hundreds of pounds and originated from the Manacacha Formation, which is a massive outcropping of sandstone that is approximately 314 million years old. According to George Dvorsky's research for Gizmodo, the tracks were made when the rocks became wet and were subsequently covered in sand, which helped to preserve the markings for millions of years. On its surface may have seen two distinct sets of tracks that were produced by extinct animals long ago. According to the announcement, experts were able to determine the age of the footprints to be approximately 313 million years old, give or take half a million years, by looking at prior research that determined the age of the formation. According to Rowland's interpretation of the footprints, this area was traversed by two distinct reptile species moving in a diagonal direction. According to Rowland, who was interviewed by the Arizona Republic, one of the creatures measured approximately one foot in length and uses a lateral sequence walk, which involves the left rear foot moving first, followed by the left front foot, and then the right rear foot, and so on. According to Gizmodo, the researchers are unable to determine with certainty if the tracks were made by two distinct creatures or the same species at different periods. The second group of tracks is moving at a pace that is a little quicker than the first. In the statement, Roland observes that living species of tetrapods, such as dogs and cats, for example, commonly utilize a lateral sequence gait while they are walking slowly. The traces on the Bright Angel Trail provide evidence that this manner of walking was used very early on in the evolution of vertebrate creatures. Before this, we did not have any knowledge of that. According to Montanari, approximately 300 million years ago, the area that is today known as Arizona was a coastal plain that featured wind-blown dunes near the equator. It has been reported by Felicia Fonseca of the Associated Press that both the creatures and the sandstone formation existed before the time of the dinosaurs. According to Roland and his co-authors in the study, this discovery also marks the earliest evidence of amniotes living in sand dunes, predating previous evidence by at least 8 million years. This evidence predates other evidence by at least 8 million years. Mark Nebel, who oversees the paleontology program at the Grand Canyon, told the Associated Press that some of the findings in Rowland's study could prove to be contentious in the future. There is a lot of controversy in the scientific world about interpreting tracks, interpreting the age of rocks, and especially interpreting what kind of animal generated these tracks, says Nebel. These tracks were made by some kind of animal, says Nebel. Nebel, however, believes that the find is an interesting one, particularly because the boulder was laying where it could be easily seen. Nebel claims that a lot of people pass by it without even noticing it's there. As scientists, our eyes have been trained. They will be more interested in it now that they are aware that there is something there. The puzzle of the great unconformity is what it is. Did you know that geologists examine the rocks to figure out how old some locations are, like the Grand Canyon? Yes, geologists can calculate the age of the canyon by dissecting its walls and analyzing the various rock layers that have accumulated there over time. The fact that the rocks that make up the Grand Canyon's walls don't appear to have all the pieces to the puzzle is one of the canyon's most perplexing aspects. In 1869, a man named John Wesley Powell observed that the walls of the canyon were missing numerous strata of the rock that were expected to be there. The walls are lacking rock that would have been there for more than a billion years. In certain regions, rocks with ages ranging from 1.4 to 1.8 billion years have been discovered just underneath rocks that have only been there for 520 million years. When it comes to determining the ages of the rocks in the canyon, presents a significant challenge. No one really understands why so much of the canyon's history is missing, even though there are a few hypotheses regarding how chunks of rock could have been washed away. This specific kind of issue is referred to as the Great Unconformity, and it has only been discovered in a few select locations. How long the Grand Canyon has been around? The Great Unconformity is one of the factors that determines how old the Grand Canyon is. The age of the Grand Canyon is only subject to speculation because the rocks that make up the canyon cannot be accurately dated. Many believe the canyon has merely formed 5 to 6 million years ago. Others place its age at 70 million years ago. That's quite a significant deviation. When you take into account the fact that there are rocks in the canyon that are 1.84 billion years old, the situation might become even more perplexing. The puzzling nature of supposedly the cursed items. People sending goods back to the park is another unusual behavior 
that has been brought up by multiple Grand Canyon Park rangers. According to the rangers, they occasionally get letters or packages with artifacts that individuals have stolen from the canyon that they think to be cursed, and that they believe to have been taken by evil spirits. It would appear that whenever they bring a memento or souvenir from their travels, they invite misfortune into their lives. Therefore, they send the item back to the return address through the mail. It is against the law to take any natural artifacts out of the natural park, regardless of whether or not they are believed to be cursed. The caves are shrouded in an enigma. Caves are another fascinating feature of the Grand Canyon. Caves can be found throughout the canyon. Only a little more than 300 caverns have been discovered to our knowledge as of this moment in time. On the other hand, geologists believe that the Grand Canyon may be home to as many as a thousand caves. What mysteries or treasures might be buried deep within these caves? This is a question that has been posed by a lot of individuals. An underground Egyptian city, according to a conspiracy theory. There is a singular event that served as the impetus for the formation of this conspiracy theory. 1909 saw the publication of an article in the Arizona Gazette that detailed the adventures of a few different explorers. It is said that explorers from the Smithsonian Institution found a secret network of large caverns. They estimated that 50,000 people may happily reside within the caverns at any given time. The caverns included a wide variety of artifacts, including statues, weapons, seeds, and more. The items were also very different from the ones that the Native Americans had in their possession. The objects had a Tibetan or Egyptian appearance about them. The excitement that everyone felt regarding this tale is very understandable. Now, there is a myth going around that there is an underground Egyptian city in the Grand Canyon. This rumor has been going around for quite some time. The Smithsonian Institution, on the other hand, does not hold any records of any of the explorers mentioned in the article and does not possess any artifacts from the mission. Some people believe that it was a hoax perpetrated by the Gazette to sell more papers. Others who believe in conspiracies assert that the Smithsonian is simply trying to conceal the information so that it may be included in the dominant narrative. Others believe that the caverns are a portal to the fourth dimension, and they believe that the region is heavenly guarded and that people are unable to access there at this time. There is also the urban legend that there are Egyptian pyramids and treasures hidden in a section of the Grand Canyon that is off-limits or forbidden. Perhaps the narrative of the cave is where these rumors got started. Maybe. Nobody is aware of it. Nevertheless, regardless of whether the stories and rumors are true or not, the fact that they exist makes for some interesting possibilities that you may discuss while you are out exploring. There is no question that the Grand Canyon will, for many years to come, continue to baffle explorers and researchers from all walks of life. When it comes to the canyon's mysteries, its sheer immensity suggests that we have probably only scratched the surface thus far in our explorations of it. That's all for the video today. We will be right back with more such videos. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.